All right, so our notes today are going to focus on function operations, and operations in mathematics are going to include addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for us today. There's one other operation called composites, but we won't be focusing on that quite yet. So here's our core concept. You've got this nice chart to reference when you need it. It says operations on functions. Let f and g be any two functions. A new function can be defined, so we're going to create something new out of two pieces, by performing any of the four, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, basic operations on f and g. So it says our example that we'll look at is f of x is equal to 5x and g of x is equal to x plus 2. So if we're focused on addition first, you might see it written like this, f plus g of x. Well, f plus g is just equal to f of x plus g of x. So f plus g is just equal to f of x plus g of x. Notice that I keep g of x in parentheses just to make sure that any signs or distribution happens accordingly. So now I've created a brand new function, 6x plus 2. Subtraction. Similar concept, f minus g of x will be equal to f of x minus g of x. So here I have f minus g of x, 5x minus, notice the parentheses, so then I'll distribute, and I end up with this brand new function of 4x minus 2. Multiplying, fg, so f times g of x is equal to f of x times g of x. So here's f of x. Here's g of x. Again, I'll distribute, this time the 5x, and I create this brand new function, 5x squared plus 10x. And then finally, division for us. So f divided by g of x is the same thing as f of x divided by g of x. So here's my 5x function on the numerator and my x plus 2 function in the denominator. The domain, so remember domain is the set of all inputs. If you're looking on a graph, it's looking from left to right. Uh, consist of the x values that are in the domains of both f and g. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Additionally, when we have the quotient, so the division one, we have to make sure that g of x, the denominator, can't equal zero. All right, so let's try one. Adding two functions. Just had to move us over a little bit. So here I have f of x equals 3 square root of x, and g of x equals negative 10 square root of x. And this says find f plus g of x. So remember, f plus g of x just means take f of x plus g of x. So I'm going to take 3 square root of x plus a negative 10 square root of x. Put those together, well since both of these have a square root of x, those are considered like terms. 3 minus 10 is negative 7 square root of x. So there is my new function. It says I'm supposed to state the domain. Well, if I think about the domain of 3 square root of x, I can take the square roots of 0 and all positive numbers, and that graph has not been shifted. This will just be a vertical stretch of 3, so that's not going to affect the domain. This one, I can also take the square root of numbers 0 to infinity. Multiplying by negative 10 does not change the set of inputs. Well, both of these have the same domain, so when I add them together, both of their domains will apply. So I get the domain is 0 to infinity. You also could think about that by graphing this guy, right? This is just the square root of x graph, so the swimmer's arm, that's been reflected and stretched by 7, okay? Uh, then it says to evaluate. So it says to evaluate the sum, sum being the answer to the addition problem, when x is 4. So my evaluating will be negative 7 times the square root of when x is 4. Well, that's really negative 7 times 2, which is negative 14. All right, so remember, there were three different parts there. We had to first find the sum, the thing in blue. Then we had to state the domain. Then it asked us to find the sum when x was 4. All right, so subtracting. Here we have f of x and g of x. If you're a color coding note taker, you might want to color code a little bit. 
says first find f minus g. Well, f minus g is the same thing as f of x minus g of x. So I'm going to take f of x minus g of x. Notice I kept parentheses because I want to then distribute this negative sign to all of these. So go ahead and pause for a second and see if you can clean up that subtraction to get to our function. Pause the video and do the subtraction, please. All right, so I came up with 2x to the third plus x squared minus 4x plus 7. The next part says to state the domain. Well, the domain of a cubic function, that's just a disco man, is all real numbers. And the domain of, oh look, another disco man is all real numbers, which means the domain of our new disco man is also all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. Last thing then for this subtraction problem, it says evaluate, so remember find a value, when x is equal to negative two. So I'm gonna replace all of my x's with the negative two. And you can type this all into your calculator if you would like to, so go ahead and take a second to do that and then we can compare answers. Or do it by hand if you're feeling ambitious. Pause your video. All right, I came up with negative five, but again, you could have just typed that into your calculator to get that value. All right, multiplying. So we are looking at f of x is x squared and g of x is the square root of x. We are supposed to find f times g. So f times g is the same thing as f of x times g of x. So I'm gonna take x squared times the square root of x. So if I think about how I could rewrite this, this is x squared times x to the 1 half. And when I multiply, I add the exponents. So this is really going to be x. I'm finding a common denominator, but you also could add on your calculator 2 plus 1 half, and you would get the same answer. I end up with x to the 5 halves. Okay. Another way to think about x to the 5 halves would be the square root of x to the 5th. Okay. So if I think about the domain of x squared, that's negative infinity to infinity. When I think about this domain of square root of x, that's only zero to positive infinity. So you can think about it, which one of these is the most restricted? This one is the most restricted. So I'm gonna take my domain from zero to infinity, okay? A way I like to think about it is x squared gets to stay out and party all night. Square root of x has to be home by midnight. Well, you want to make sure that all parents are happy, so have the earlier curfew, get home by midnight. Okay, and that makes sense here because our square root function is limiting us to say that whatever is underneath my radical has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that x itself has to be greater than or equal to zero, which we write like this with our interval notation. Last thing then, just like the other ones, is to evaluate. So when x is 9, so I'm going to take the square root of 9 to the fifth power. But remember, we could view that as the square root of 9, which we know, to the fifth power. Or you could use your power book. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the fifth is going to end up being 243, should be our final answer. All right, now we got to divide. So we have our f of x is 6x. We have our g of x is x to the 3 fourths. We're supposed to find f divided by g. Well, f divided by g is just f of x over g of x. So I'm going to take 6x over x to the 3 fourths. Well, to get this simplified, I'm going to think about this as 6 times x times x to the negative 3 fourths, or I could just subtract 1 minus 3 fourths. Either way, I'm going to get to the same answer. So 6, 1 minus 3 fourths is going to be 
1 fourth, which really means 6 fourth root of x. All right, so let's talk about domains. The domain of our f of x, right, uh, is going to be from negative infinity to infinity because we just have a line. And our g of x, remember this is really the fourth root of x to the third. And when we take the fourth root of something, we can only have positive inputs because otherwise we end up with imaginary answers. So when I put these two, oops, that got erased. When I put these two together, right, the one that's more restrictive is the one that goes from zero to infinity. Uh, the other way you can do it is check your final answer, right? Our fourth root of x would restrict us to only positive numbers. All right, the last thing to do with this one then is to evaluate when x is 16. So I'm going to take 6 times the fourth root of 16. Using my power booklet or my calculator, the fourth root of 16 is 2 because I can think about 16 is the same thing as 2 to the 4th, and then my 4s and my root 4 cancel out. So my final evaluation is 12. All right, last one is going to be one that you need your calculator for. We're going to look at a real-life problem. So if you don't have your calculator out yet, please get it. For a white rhino, the heart rate in beats per minute are, so we have function R, and lifespan S in minutes are related to body mass. So our inputs, if we were to graph these, are based on the mass of the rhino. So how big is this rhino? Find the product R of M times S of M. So I'm going to take R of M, 241 M, I'm going to write that as negative 0.25, just because writing the zero is a little bit small, times 6 million, whew, and then m to the point 0.2. All right, so I'm multiplying these two things together. I think I'm definitely going to want my calculator for that. So let's see what 241 times 6 oops, million That is a very large number. 1446 How many zeros are we looking at? Probably could do scientific notation for this if you wanted to. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So we're looking at 1,446,000,000. And then we're going to have M. Well, if I have two things that are multiplied with the same base, I'm going to add their exponents. So I'm going to say negative 0.25 plus 0.2 is going to leave me with negative 0.05. You can do that on your calculator if you're not confident with your decimal work. But this creates my final product, R of M times S of M. Then it says, what would this function represent? So this is where, like, what's the point in doing a real-world problem if we don't actually think about what it means? So R of M was representing our heart rate in beats per minute. So we just took beats per minute, and we multiplied it by uh, lifespan in minutes. So what we just really found is the total number of heartbeats that a rhino has in their lifetime. in the rhino's lifetime based on mass, because m is still our input. So best, I said best when I said mass, based on mass. Okay, and that's just a workaround with the units. So we had beats per minute. Canceled out with minutes, right? Unit conversions. So we had total beats, but our input here, so the total number of beats is equal to that many things times their mass in kilograms. Yikes. All right, that concludes your video. Go ahead and work on the next pages in your packet.